Welcome everyone to part three of Wednesday Night Luke Live Online with Father James DeLucio in the Paulist Rectory Library here in New York City, now with some commentary on the story of the parable of the ten gold coins, more historically known as the ten talons. So here we are. What do you make of it? The first thing is try and register any feeling responses to it. Let's try to go to the gut first. Comfortable, uncomfortable, righteous, disapproving, judgmental, hurt, upset, angry. Whatever you're feeling is okay. That's the Holy Spirit at work. He's evoking greater conversation. That's exactly what Jesus wants. That's the purpose the gospel was given. Bring us together. Talk about our real feelings. And then what are those feelings connected? What kind of thoughts are connected to those feelings? And let the conversation happen. That's exactly why Jesus says all these provocative parables, so that we don't take things at surface level and that we go deeper and deeper and deeper. Okay, so it's an interesting parable. The nobleman once goes off to attain the kingship, meaning it doesn't come from human hands, this kingship. He has to go off. It's God. It's God the Father. It's the Holy Spirit that's endowing Jesus with the, the kingdom, the, the role of king, Messiah of the kingdom, the guide, the, re, the leader, the ruler, the benevolent king. So we have that. Uh, and then the gifts that are given to everybody to use their faith for what? Hope and love, to inspire and bring hope and love. And some of those who are, who are given that gift of faith, they invest it. They invest it in their lives. They let faith, hope, and love imbue every aspect of their lives, which we hopefully all try to do. And obviously some uh, in this world get extremely, extremely, uh, it's the word I want. They get extremely rewarded for their good, uh, for their goodness, and others get rewarded, but not fully. This is the life, but it's still very good. And then, as Jesus says, if you're given more, the uh, consequences of goodness continue to flow. You end up getting a lot more than you ever thought you'd have in the first place. We all know that. We know that the consequences of good actions reap great, great benefits. Uh, generosity knows no boundaries. Uh, that wonderful domino effect and how we are imitators, all of us. We copy. If we see people being generous, we like to be generous too. Now, the other, of course, is also true. When people are fearful, we can get caught up in their fear. When people are angry, we can get caught up in that. So then we have, of course, the reality. Jesus was a great realist of the third servant representative of us when we're afraid and when we're putting God to the test. Now, remember, do you remember? Long ago in chapter 3, the temptations of Jesus, uh, one of them is to turn the stone into bread and Jesus said shall not put God to the test well actually he said you don't live by bread alone I'm sorry it was the third temptation when the devil says throw yourself down from here and then that's when Jesus says you don't put God to the test and that's exactly what we see in this third servant he's making all these judgments testing God well I don't I don't like what you're doing I don't like the fact that you expect all this honor and glory what did you do for me and um, besides that, I didn't know how you were going to act here. I just saved the coin. You, you gave me a coin. You get it back. I'm not, I didn't know what to do with it. You know, I'm just, you know, I, I don't like the way you operate. Which, of course, again, in times of suffering and difficulty, we all ask those questions. We all can fall into that funk. Um, and then we need to look at the role models, the saints, the biblical characters of great faith, the saints from before, from our history, and then the people who are as, as saintly as humanly possible in our own day and be inspired by them. But we can get in the funk. And so there we have this person putting Jesus to the test, putting, the, putting God to the test, the king to the test. And then Jesus says, well, by your own words, I condemn you. It's... I'm not condemning you. Your own words are. Look at look at how you failed to engage in faith and hope and love. 
um, and to trust and to do just your part in this world. Instead, you, you left yourself drowning to go back to our icon from the first part of these three parts. But you don't let me pull you out. You just decide to stay there, to stay there drowning. So um, we have that and the very humbling truth to more who've been given, more responsibility is expected so that we can do our part with the gifts that we have. Now, as for the last one, like a terrible statement, as for those who don't want, who don't uh, want me to be their king, slay them before me. Again, too often we see that this is, you know, the wrath of God, the anger of God. But if you recall, so how often I say that when these punitive or ugly passages um, from Jesus or by God and whether we're, whatever testament we're reading, the Hebrew Testament or the Christian Testament, they're really a cover, to uh, a, a door to open up to go deeper. Um, they're just saying these things are important and that there are consequences, there's terrible consequences for not acknowledging the presence of God. That's it, for not recognizing we have been given so much, for not being thankful and not using what we have, including, I'm not just talking material things, I'm talking using our spirits and, and, and our gifts and our, our people skills and our communication skills and however we best communicate by words or songs or writing or, um, you know, lending a helping hand at work or at home or wherever that may be. So that's really what's going on. Again, uh, there's just the seriousness of it. Yeah, we, we create our own hell, if you will. So, and that's just the surface of this parable. So I hope my commentary is helpful to you. By all means, go to your Bibles, read other commentaries. Uh, so let's keep the conversation going. Thank you so much for joining me on this Feast of St. Paul the Apostle, his conversion, January 25th, the end of the week of prayer for Christian unity, but we don't have to stop praying for true fellowship among all Christians. And then some. <laughs> God bless everyone. Have a great week.